right, we'll get started with this video. This is a brief tutorial to discuss the topic of thresholding and how you would use it to get a more accurate and precise measurement of your actual tracer stains on your uh, droplet collectors. And so before we get started, I'm going to assume that you have already been to the smalldropsprays.info website and downloaded image J, which you can, if you haven't, you can go to the image J software page and down and find the links to download image J. And then you should go through the tutorials on running your first image. You can find a video for that here. And then the third thing you should go look for is there is sample data available on the sample data page and you can download a folder called test scans that gives you four different small data sets and uh, and some blanks and some other uh, resources that will help you have good um, images to work with while you're getting comfortable with the image J software and the procedures defined here so assuming that you've been through all that we'll go ahead and get started so again, we've got our image J window up here, and we are going to pull up our test scans window. Now, the thresholding is the process of defining the colors that ascribe to your deposition stains, uh, mainly that would be the result of the tracer that you've added to your spray. And defining that range so that you can exclude all of the other colors that don't have anything to do with your spray. And by doing that, you can get a very, very accurate uh, idea of what your percent cover is and your, your number of hits and other things like that. So we'll go ahead and get started on that. So assuming that we didn't know what our thresholds were at all, um, we're again going to use our Rotamine sprayed, I'm sorry, Rotamine WT sprayed cards. And so we want to pick one that's got a fair number of hits on it, but it's not just totally saturated. And so we'll pick uh, 4M2T02 here. And actually, we'll go back over to the image J. So we just previewed these slides here. And so we'll go to image J and we're going to open. Blank collector. And we'll go back to that 40 micron. OK, there he is. And so we look at this guy. There's a lot of color on here. We really want a good, we want a good uh, piece of color on this, or a good a good bit of color. So, and we've got that. All right. So at this point, we're okay again for good diligence. We'll go back and uh, make sure that our scale is good, and our scale is good. And we don't really need to worry about our set measurements at the moment, but we'll go ahead and check those, and make sure that they're still the same set of measurements again area percent area and some other uh, diameters and things that you might want to measure if you were actually looking at droplet size distributions but right now we're just looking for colors so so we're going to go over to image we're going to go over to adjust and threshold again as we've mentioned threshold and color threshold are pretty much the same thing just go ahead and choose threshold and we get our HSB, our huge saturation and brightness thresholding window. The, that's the color space here. If you are on a different color space, make sure you choose HSB. And so we can see here, this makes it pretty easy. Uh, we can see that there's a lot of dye on this card already. We knew there was a lot of dye. We knew it was a reddish dye. And so we can pretty much see the range that we would want to be in to capture that die. And so we can use the slider bars in this window to make sure that we've got everything. And so we'll do that. And we know from our blank calibration that we want to be between 4 and 6. So we'll go ahead and set 6 and we'll set our brightness at 255. Okay. So this is where the art comes in. So at this point we've seen, you know, we can see this uh, this very this magenta range here getting up into red. Curiously enough, magenta and red are pretty different on the color spectrum, but uh, and we're we're 
using a, a threshold and color of red here. I'm going to actually, for this exercise, choose black. And the reason I'm going to do that is as we change these slider bars, I want to see if there's any magenta left in the background. As you slide over here, you can see there's pinkish left all over in the background uh, as we go through the threshold, the different uh, color range. So this is a pretty inundated card. It looks to me, it, so the, the big question here is where do the colors start and the contamination stop? And that's going to be a little bit of art. Um, and so we're going to we're going to make our best guess. You know, on this card, I'm guessing that probably somewhere around 192 is the is the threshold. 192, 194 is the threshold between blue and magenta here. And it doesn't look like it makes a whole heck of a lot of difference there. Um, we'll slide the slider back over, back and forth here. Obviously, that uh, that eats up those those two uh, degrees of extra saturation. Eat up an extra a lot more coverage. So, <clears throat> of course, our brightness pass is always zero to two hundred fifty-five because any pixel of any brightness with a color in it, we want. So we switch back and forth here. Again, this this may be a nearly covered card. There's a couple things we can do at this point. Um, we could just go with those numbers and make sure that well, we could start to run an analysis and we can run our analyze particles routine. through there real quick. Okay, and so eh, a lot of particles here. Of course, there's a lot of static all over the place. But uh, And so you can change the slider bars and see if that actually changes your numbers to speak of. So let's run it up to the 198 where I typically start the magenta. And we'll run that uh, analyze again. And that's changed our particles quite a bit. So we, we've uh, we've actually our total area has gone down just ever so slightly, 90, uh, less than a tenth of a percent. We're already at almost 90 percent coverage. So this is this is semantic. All right. So looking at the uh, looking at our percent area here covered, it's really, really high for this, so it's going to be hard to get the finer points of the uh, the thresholding. So we're going to take, uh, so we learned a little bit from this, but we're going to go ahead and go after another image, so we'll go ahead and close this. Go into File, Open. And let's get somebody who's got a, a anything with a B as an underside. And so we'll open that, and that'll give us so much. So we start to bring our threshold down and it looks like just looking at the quality of what we're seeing here, it looks like we're just seeing smudges and dirt. We're not really seeing spray droplets. But sometimes we definitely don't have very many droplets here. So this is where that uh, saturation pass might make a big difference. So we'll pop it down to four and take a look here. And it looks like, looks like we're actually getting droplets out of that. But you don't really know. So if you right click and, and drag an area and then hit control plus, you can start zooming into that area. And now we're getting close to that. We start actually looking at those single, singular pixels. 
can move back and forth and see what this actual threshold means to us here. And so, so now we're down to one. And of course, if we get to zero, well, we're still pretty low there. But um, remembering back to our imaging threshold or our um, our blank calibration, somewhere between three and four, we were pretty we pretty much knew that we didn't have we had almost no background anymore. And so let's see what we can do for control minus minus minus. We'll start zooming out. This is kind of the art of it is looking at the stains and trying to decide are we actually looking at something real or not. And most of these look more or less Most of these look more or less like some sort of a roundish stain. Again, very, very small drops. So I think we're probably in a decent way with regards to where we've chosen here. Oops, got myself a little bit out of my screen. That's why it's. So the next thing we can do is try and move our threshold a little bit, see if that makes any difference. And sure enough, as we go up, it really does start to make a difference. a whole lot between 180 and 198. Yeah, 192. Probably looks like... <clears throat> when you're trying to get... An another tool that you can use that I don't use very often, but when you're trying to get a feel for whether or not you've, you've picked the right range or not, is if we go in to our Analyze Particles routine, and at this point you've probably watched one of the other videos now, so you've seen this routine before. This is where we can go in to show uh, count masks. And we're going to go ahead and run this. Oops. Okay, so we're going to get back in on this. So I've, I've changed our mask color to red just to facilitate the next analysis here. So we're going to run so here's our, our prior two cards with our heavy coverage. 87% coverage. So now we're going to run this card, which is going to be obviously a lot less than 87%. We'll run our Analyze Particles. Change the background to red, you can see. And we're going to show outlines on this, uh, on this an analysis. And so it's generated our, uh, our table of individual droplet stains. It's added uh, a summary here. We've got 600 stains at this point. Uh, but the neat thing is it's now created this extra overlay image. And so we're going to zoom in. This doesn't look like much. It looks like a bunch of static until you start to zoom real close. So we just right click and drag and drop to create a, a selected area. And then we hit Control plus plus. And so what you can actually see as you can see, each individual stain that Image J has found and delineated. And so by doing this, this is again part of the art. This kind of can start to give you an idea of the results that your thresholding has, ha has, has on the image. So if you go through and run this again, I'm not going to do this, but I'm, I'll let you. You get the idea at this point. So you can change your threshold values, and you can you can save this drawing, and you might want to so that you can compare them. But uh, and if if you don't believe these numbers or you want to kind of get an idea, you can actually look up number 265 here. And get the value for it. Yeah, you get the idea. So, so while while you're staring at all of this overwhelmed because it's new, these are some interesting tools that can just 
help you get a contextual feeling of how image J is processing these different uh, these different types of images and you could could and probably should repeat this process with three or four more videos or I'm sorry with three or four more images and once you've done a half a dozen of them or so in a range, you'll you'll start to get an idea whether or not the ranges that you're working with are the correct ranges or not. And it looks like we're pretty close at this point. Again, we've we've adjusted a little bit off of our seat of the pants number instead of 198, we're at 192 and 240, and we've opened up the range a little bit because that's what the images told us that we could. So. Again, if you were using blue dye, you'd pick a different range here, or orange dye, you'd pick a range down at the end. But uh, this is the basic process for thresholding. And the end result is you write down these numbers, and, and that is your recipe for dialing in an image when you go to open a new scan and threshold. Image J is owned and maintained by the U.S. Government National Institute of Health. And this video was brought to you by Application Insight, LLC in January of 2015.